My brother Leroy was always a bright kid. Everybody called him Mac, and everybody loved him. As a teenager, he began to hang out with the wrong crowd, the kind of people who would just make some bad choices. After some time, he wanted to get away from these people and change his life. He got his own apartment and began a career in the printing business. He, Mac was very bright and could have made quite a contribution to humanity. Whew, damn. That's, that makes me tear up just looking at it again. Hi, my name is Wyatt Maker. I'm a filmmaker, cinematographer, uh, actor, and stand-up comedian, and I got my start at RealWorks. <laughs> my name is Wyatt Maker, and I did a whole being able to be given a camera and just saying, go, shoot your thing, express yourself, I thought was immensely valuable to who I am as an artist now. And, and it was very, it was critical to my development in my artistry, filmmaking, and even acting wise back then. I mean, most recently, CBS is bull for a couple of years as a camera assistant. And right now I'm working on Saturday Night Live and um, their pre-tape stuff. I'm working and, and doing my thing and uh, really loved my work experience. And, you know, I thought their guidance was not only beneficial to who I am as, a, as an artist, but they teach you to uh, realize what's important when you're constructing something, when you're putting something together. And um, that notion can travel on to any other piece of art you want to do. And uh, Real Works set me on the path for doing that. And I, I, think, it's, I think it's pretty great. It's awesome. But, you know, I'm proud of my brother. I'm proud of Mac. I'm proud of all the things that he's accomplished. I'm proud of the man that he was starting to be. I'm proud of um, all the things he's done. Even to the bad times that me and him had, I will always love him. I will always love him. Always wide. about your brother, the first thing that comes to mind is just his smile. And him and I, growing up, we fought brother and sister. Like, we were ready to kill each other at points, and I'm making fun of his smile about how big it was, and just back and forth, and it's, that was just the most brilliant thing about him. A charismatic, handsome, funny, intelligent, and carefree young man. He loved video games, anything that was enjoyable, that made him laugh, that made others laugh. As a person who was not afraid to tell the truth, courageous. At times he needed that push or that shove to get homework done and stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, overall, you know, he was he was a fun kid. He was funny. He Mac was very bright and could have made quite a contribution to humanity. My brother Leroy was always a bright kid. Everybody called him Mac, and everybody loved him. As a teenager, he began to hang out with the wrong crowd, the kind of people who would just make some bad choices. After some time, he wanted to get away from these people and change his life. He got his own apartment and began a career in the printing business. Everything was finally falling into place when this happened. And that's what kills me the most. The sun was getting brighter. Your brother was happy. But on September of 2004, he was gunned down by a supposed best friend on a Brooklyn street. My mom was calling me. And so as I answer the phone, um, she's telling me, you know, where are you? And then I'm like, why? What's going on? Um, she's like, I need you to come home. I need you to come home now. They said that somebody had gotten shot. 
on Second Street. And I came home and I said to my mom, did you hear that somebody got shot on Second Street? And my mother's face was just, it wasn't right. And I came and I said, what's the matter? And she goes, you know the person who got shot on Second Street. And I was like, I do? I said, who was it? And she just started crying. And she said, Leroy. And my heart just stopped. Yeah, I was uh, 14 when it happened, yeah. It's strange because when you're 14 or whenever you're a kid or whenever, at any age in your life, you'd never think like something like this would ever happen. Especially at the funeral, it's like, it was like I had like my best friend taken away in a sense. I think that's the point when reality set. When I when we opened the doors to the you know hole and twenty feet down I saw a man in a coffin. I never thought I would see that. I never thought I would see my brother in a coffin. This is somebody that we I grew up with. This is somebody that I had so many laughs with. This is somebody that was like my friend before my brother because of our age difference. My friend, or I'm not gonna even say that, get the best of this person. And uh, this person decided to say, you know what, I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill you. I went to the car, pulled out a pistol, and chased my brother zigzag up the street. And shot him, got him down on the leg, got him down on the neck, and then proceeded to execute my brother. The shooter then fled to Arizona, where three months later he was found and indicted for murder. He was then tried and convicted to 25 years to life in prison. What things uh, got you through this tough time? Oh my God, God. <laughs> oh my oh God, God. My, yeah, oh my God, God. I mean... There were times that I felt guilty for having fun. I hold on to my faith, which tells me that God says it's going to be all right. There's a reason for everything. I have no idea why, what, but it is. August 2001, I began to write a book. I wanted to take some highlights from my work, which I believe best describes our experience. The way out. For me, the way out was respecting Mac's decision to stand up for himself. He did what he felt he had to do. Physical death is a chance you take sometimes when you take a stand, a real stand. People like Mac, my son, they don't easily back down. They tell the truth. What is truth? the way things really are. I have in my room like a little shrine set up with the mask card and pictures of us and rosary beads and pictures of an angel. And every night when I go to bed, I look at him and I know he's looking at me. And I just ask him to be strong and to make the Mets win. And it's like, you know, I say to myself, how do I explain who Mac was to my kids? How do I explain who Mac is to your kids, you know? How do you keep him alive in the future, you know, in my future? That's things that I think about. Here I am in Brooklyn on 2nd Street between 6th Avenue and 5th Avenue. The spot where my son Mac was mortally wounded. Well, for, as for me, it's a, it's a moment of feeling that I've overcome, that my family has overcome, by the mere fact that I can stand here in this spot 
and speak without fainting and falling on the ground here in grief. After all, heaven is a place for overcomers. That's what God said. And I've overcome some very bad things. Again, you have to go back to your faith and get strength and courage from that and hopefully learn from the experience so that you can grow as a human being and uh, go about the business of living, enjoying your life and uh, making everybody else's life uh, better in some way. Have faith in God for me and just concentrate on the good times. Because in the end, that's all you can do. Faith helps you to connect the dots, you know. And I think that um, that's how I'm going to live my life, you know. I just got to take it one day at a time. You know, it's, it's not one day that goes by that I don't think about math. That's never going to change. Um, I don't care if I have Alzheimer's. <laughs> it's never going to change. <laughs> I'll probably be like to my husband, who's it? I mean, who are you? What's Mac? <laughs> there he is. He's like, I don't see him. Oh, I must be getting old. I don't know. I, I, <laughs> I see an angels and stuff. I don't know. You know, there's, there's never going to be a day. But I'm going to be all right. Now, if you like this video, make sure you hit like, comment, and subscribe to keep up to date with all of RealWorks YouTube videos. And don't forget to watch the films of the next generation of filmmakers. Now, at RealWorks, we believe when you change the storytellers, you can change the world. Support RealWorks.